so we were discussing those temperature measurement systems used in metal cutting first we saw work tool thermocouple where work and cutting tool are uh, considered to be part of the temperature measurement system now those who are connected to a temperature measurement system whereas in uh, direct thermocouple measurement those who are uh, separated from the actual measurement system and uh, we just discussed their advantages also next is uh, radiation methods now we know that uh, in metal cutting sometimes you will come across a situation where the application of either work tool thermocouple or direct thermocouple will not be a feasible solution in uh, modern day situations the machine tools are going to be much complicated because of uh, the tooling uh, instruments and then work holding and all fixtures and all uh, those uh, the machines are going to be compact one and then installing these um, temperature measuring thermocouples and all will be difficult one and in such a scenario we need to go for contactless measurement and the one of the solution for that contactless measurement is radiation measurements so what happens in case of radi radiation measurements we know that <clears throat> whenever you heat a metal whenever you provide heat to metal it starts emitting radiations one second okay till now power cut was there okay so whenever metal is heated it starts emitting radiations that we know and intensity of those radiations will be proportional to temperature so as temperature increases the intensity also increases so that way if you can use that intensity of a radiation to measure the temperature then this contactless measurement would be a feasible solution and that's what exactly we do in case of these radiation methods so in radiation methods we use <coughs> uh, thermal cameras or Uh, sensitive films to infrared radiations and those thermal cameras and all are used to measure the temperature the image shown over here is the working window of the thermal camera so here you can see this is a chuck this is the work piece which is rotating this whole thing is tool holder and this is the tool and this is actual machining zone so you when you uh, take picture using such a thermal camera you will get this color variation this yellowish point is the highest temperature if you look at this bar this bar actually shows the temperature the black or bluish is the lowest temperature and then a red and then yellow and then whitish so in this direction the temperature is increasing so from the sketch you can easily get that the maximum temperature is somewhere here and then this chip is also at the maximum temperature and then this is the actual uh, cutting zone on the workpiece surface that has got certain elevated temperature and as you go away from the 
cutting zone the temperature is dropping further so that way you can go for the contact less measurement the application is wherever the machining is machining zone is not accessible or not easy to mount those thermocouples and all in such a scenario we need to go for these thermocouple measurements uh, sorry uh, radiation measurements next so now we are done with that first part thermal aspects now second part of the uh, third unit is tool life and uh, tool wear okay so in tool life or while discussing the tool life of cutting tool the effect of tool life that we need to discuss first now when we use suppose case a and case b suppose in case a if i increase the material removal rate what will happen the temperature generation is going to increase tool wear also going to increase and that way you need to use more number of tools all regrinding will be a frequent one if you are using a insert kind of tool then you need to replace this tool and if you are uh, regrinding bar of the cutting tool material then regrinding has to be done so when you use a high material removal rate the ultimate result is going to be frequent change of the cutting tool or regrinding of the cutting because when you increase the material removal rate these things are going to follow reverse to that if i reduce the material removal rate the cutting tool replacement regrinding of the cutting tool those two things are going to fall down when you in decrease the material removal rate the production rate is also going to fall okay so you will be having two choices either increase the production rate and compensate this tooling cost you can increase the production rate but we know that the uh, frequent uh, regrinding or replacement of it and both are going to result into the uh, some expenses so increase the material removal rate and bear this tooling cost or decrease the production rate to save this cost no choice is ours the case one the production rate is very high tooling cost is very high production rate is very low tooling cost is very low now actually this case a is not a better solution nor this case b is better solution because if this tooling cost is very high even by increasing production rate the profit that we expect from the system will not be there and the case b is obviously not a solution because if you drop the production rate then by saving that tooling cost uh, is not worth it. right so this case b is also not a, a, a better solution so what we need to do we need to find some optimum condition between those two where this production rate is good enough and this replacement of cutting tools and regrinding is also not much there so that way we need to have this optimum condition okay next types of wears so in case of uh, 
to uh, usually uh, when uh, uh, cutting tool wears uh, two uh, types of wears are there the first one is called as gradual or progressive wear means there will be uh, wear wearing of the cutting tool with a, a gradual rate gradual and steady rate whereas the second one is failures bringing the uh, life of the cutting tool to a premature end means if i consider a cutting tool and i am using this cutting tool to remove material the two types wear first one is gradual so gradual wear would be layer by layer material will be keep removing or this cutting tool will keep losing the material but that is going to be a gradual one so i can keep using this cutting tool for a certain duration even though the material is gradually uh, being lost by the cutting tool that is the first case and in second case what happens due to some unusual phenomena the phenomena is like uh, there is some uh, foreign particle in the workpiece material or uh, uh, if you increase or decrease uh, depth of cut or feed rate suddenly or if there is some uh, impurity in the cutting tool itself or there is some a uh, defect in cutting tool itself because of such a situations what happens instead of wearing out the tool gradually instantly tool breaks into parts suddenly and in that case also we need to replace that cutting tool so first case is gradual wear and second case is failure of the cutting tool that brings the life of tool to a premature end because still cutting edges are there but due to the phenomena that i discussed the cutting tool has got broken and we cannot use it further so that is the second scenario now we need to discuss this first scenario uh, gradual or progressive wear so progressive wear has got three uh, major uh, phenomena the first one is adhesion second one is abrasion and third one is diffusion wear okay now instead of discussing this one on this slide let me get you to the blank slide and i'll explain it over there so this is a cutting tool no oh, form cheap and cut chip thickness and finished workpiece surface okay this is our t0 this is tc this is a right angle this is two this is a workpiece okay this much nomenclature is enough okay so what happens the three phenomena we discussed first one is adhesion second one abrasion and third one was what was the third one if i switch to that slide this whole sketch will be gone so before going to that third one let me explain this ab, uh, ab, uh, addition and abrasion first yeah third one is diffusion okay so those three phenomena were there so addition so in addition what happens we have discussed somewhere that uh, built up edge formation while discussing the types of chips we uh, discussed one type of chip that was a continuous chip with built up edge so what happens in case of this built up edge when this cutting tool moves in this direction by removing the material material starts accumulating over here in uh, on the cutting edge of the uh, cutting tool so it start accumulating it starts piling up and uh, once a sufficient amount has uh, got accumulated what happens the chip is continuously flowing the cutting tool is continuously moving in this direction chip removal is continuous and this material accumulation is there so what happens at certain instance 
this accumulated material will stick to this uh, lower end of the chip that is going to flow along the rake face so this material sticks to the chip and it goes along with the chip additionally some material gets deposited on the work surface also okay now when this accumulated material either it gets deposited on the work surface or it sticks to the uh, chip and it goes away from the work piece material in both the cases when this accumulated material separates from this cutting tool it takes some additional material of the cutting tool along with it so it is taking some material some material sticks to this accumulated material uh, uh, some material of the tool and that way there would be certain amount of wear on the cutting tool and that wear is called as adhesion okay second type of wear is abrasion now what hap what happens in abrasion now suppose uh, actually that would be next step of the adhesion first kind of wear would be adhesion and next would be abrasion so what happens in case of uh, abrasion suppose from here the accumulated material has stick to the chip the material has stick to the chip and while uh, sticking to, or separating from the cutting tool it has taken some uh material from the cutting tool also and now that has got stick to the chip itself now when this uh, accum uh the separated material along with the some portion of the cutting tool material when it flows along the rake face it rubs against the rake face that accum uh, that material will come in contact with the rake face it rubs against the rake face and so it will wear out the cutting tool and that phenomena is called as abrasion because we know that cutting tool material is hard enough additionally this accumulated material also sometimes get hard because of the strain hardening and work hardening and when that hard material flows along the chip along the rake face flows with the chip along the rake face it rubs against the rake face and there will be wear of the cutting tool and that wear is called as abrasion okay same wear could be on the flank face also because this material which has got uh, deposited on the work piece that might come in contact with the tool over here and that also may rub against the tool abrasion and third one is diffusion now to discuss this diffusion we need to take help of the chemistry we know that if i brought two materials in contact with each other let me get back to this slide yes Uh, third one diffusion so if there are two materials those are brought in contact with each other one has got higher atomic concentration and another has got low atomic concentration so usually what happens the atoms get transferred from material which has got high atomic concentration so if in between cutting tool and work piece if cutting tool has got high atomic concentration and work piece has got low atomic concentration then there will be transfer of atoms from the cutting tool to the work piece at elevated temperature when temperature increases at that elevated temperature this reaction might takes place between the cutting tool and work piece that is transfer of atoms from the cutting tool to the work piece and because of that one there will be certain amount of wear on the cutting tool and that wear is called as diffusion wear or solid state diffusion any doubt any query in these three wears first one adhesion second abrasion third one diffusion any doubt any query 
if you have any let me know if you don't have any okay okay good let's continue the next point is uh, forms of wear in metal cutting we saw types of wear that is uh, progressive wear and second one was sudden failure of the cutting tool we are still looking at the uh, progressive wear only so in progressive wear there are two types of uh, or two forms of wear observed on the cutting tool so those two forms are this is our cutting tool okay and on this cutting tool when this chip flows in this a uh, direction the chip is going to have this kind of uh, surface curve surface and when this surface keeps rubbing against this straight surface of the cutting tool the replica of this shape gets generated on the cutting tool that's what we observe over here so this much material has got worn out because of the rubbing of the rake face and the chip okay that wear is called as crater wear the wear occurring on rake face of the cutting tool because of rubbing of the chip and cutting tool and the shape would be a replica of shape of the chip that is crater wear second as i said the if i consider this as a fresh cutting tool that that uh, we are just going to use for the metal cutting this point will be exposed to maximum cutting forces the overall force acting on the cutting tool uh, will be same but if you consider the concentration because area of that point is very small and because of that one the concentration is going to be very high so there are maximum chances of this point to be worn out quickly and once that point has gone the surface or some portion of the cutting tool comes in contact with finished workpiece surface and it keeps rubbing with the finished workpiece surface and because of the rubbing action between workpiece and tool once that point has gone that rubbing action results in formation of this flat surface on the cutting tool and that surface will be replica of finished surface now because the finished surface is going to be flat in nature so similar flat surface will be developed on the cutting tool also and that wear is called as flank wear because this is flank face of the cutting tool this is the rake face of the cutting tool the wear we observe on the rake face is crater wear and the wear we observe on the flank face is flank wear okay so these are the two types of wear that we or forms of wear that we observe on the cutting tool first one is crater and second one is flank wear uh in case of crater wear itself the maximum wear will be observed somewhere here and this one if you relate to this sketch the maximum temperature is somewhere here okay and the maximum wear is also in the same region so there is close relation between that temperature distribution also with the uh, crater wear 
that maximum amount of wear will be in the same region where maximum temperature is going to be there because when temperature increases the material gets softer and when that soft material comes in contact with the chip there are more chances of the uh, increase in the wear rate that's why we get maximum wear in that location now what happens because of this crater wear as this crater wear keeps on increasing this a uh, reduction in dimension will result in failure of the cutting tool from here somewhere here cutting tool gets fail why because as this wear increases this edge becomes narrow and narrow and that won't be able to withstand again the cutting forces generated and it will break that would be extreme condition but this this will be uh, ultimate result if uh, you neglect this crater wear or if you continue to using cutting tool even after this crater wear has got increased to a large extent this will be the ultimate result that tool will fracture in this orientation and <clears throat> we know that this uh, sudden fracture of the cutting tool is uh going to be a result in an adverse effect on the finished work surface because suppose uh, consider a situation that you are machining the work piece holding it in a chuck and you are almost has reached the final dimensions you have removed uh, extra material by using a rough machining condition and now you have removed or you are removing a small layer to get the final dimensions as well as accuracy accuracy or surface finish and in that situation if that tool fails what will happen there will be a damage on the work piece and as you were machining or you were removing a small layer and you were about to reach the final dimensions if some indentation has got on the work piece surface then you need to throw this work piece or you need to discard this one right so that's why this sudden failure is not desirable and you need to keep an eye uh, keep an eye on this wear rate if it has got exceeded certain limit just regrind the cutting tool or if you are using insert replace the cutting tool okay so that is uh, crater wear next uh, flank wear we discuss this one now next uh, flank wear there are few more things that we need to discuss in case of flank wear uh, flank wear <coughs> we know that that is a result of the uh, friction between the finished work surface and the cutting tool that results into the flank wear now if you plot that flank wear this is actually width of that wear on the cutting tool that is denoted by vb and that vb has been plotted along y axis with time along x axis zero means you just have got the new cutting tool and you have started the machine so when you plot the width of the flank wear with respect to time, there are three zones the first one ab second bc and third one cd now in case of eb that is when there is a fresh cutting tool and as we know this fresh cutting edge is going to wear out quickly so initially there is sudden increase in the wear a to b okay and once that edge has gone then the work surface and cutting tool surface will start rubbing against each other and after that 
that wear rate is going to follow a steady rate till point C. Initial breakdown is there, so sudden increase, then gradual increase. And what happens after certain duration when a large portion of cutting tool comes in contact with workpiece? This is also in motion, this is also in motion, there is friction in this zone. This uh, large surface will result in increase in a uh, temperature because large surfaces are rubbing against each other. So there will be increase in temperature also and ultimately this increase in temperature and rubbing will uh, result in after point C, I'm discussing this one after point C. So this increase in temperature and rubbing togetherly increase the wear rate again drastically. And beyond point C, there are chances that the tool will worn out quickly and that might fail also. So three zones are there. First one AB where initial cutting edge has gone or a fracture of that small initial cutting edge. Then once that uh, cutting tool surface has uh, comes in contact with the workpiece and rubbing has started, there will be gradual increase. And after certain extent, when a large portion of the cutting tool is rubbing against workpiece surface, after certain range, that wear rate increases quickly again beyond C or in region C, D. Okay. So this kind of nature would be there in case of flying wear. All the things has been this, uh, written over here that I have discussed. Now, what is advised in case of flying wear is that before you enter in a region CD, you should replace or regrind the cutting tool or you should never continue machining once the C point has got reach. Because what we beyond point C, there is going to be a gradual or a more severe wear in the cutting tool and that may lead into the uh, fracture of the cutting tool also. So it is advised that once point C has reached, regrind the cutting tool or replace the cutting tool. So that is all about the... In the last session, we saw types of wears. In that types of wear, we discussed uh, progressive wear, uh, the nature of wear causes and all. And today we are going to discuss the important parameter that is called tool life criteria. So tool life criteria is nothing but, suppose if I take a fresh tool and I started with the machining. Uh, so exactly at what instant should I stop using the cutting tool? Means if I consider a single point cutting tool, it is going to have two major faces. This first one is called as rake face and the another one is called as flank face. So on these two faces, when chip forms, it is going to flow across this rake face and while moving across this rake face, the shape of chip, this shape is going to be formed on the cutting tool also by warning out the cutting tool. And over here, this is going to be a finished workpiece surface and when this cutting tool 
rubs against this flat surface similar flat is going to be observed on the cutting tool so this much area is going to be worn out <coughs> so when you use a cutting tool and we know that the cutting tool wear is going to begin from this point the first point that is going to be worn out is this cutting edge because it is a fine sharp edge and that is going to be uh, exposed to cutting forces at the beginning itself and that is going to be worn out quickly and then this crater wear and this flank wear will proceed so the magnitude or distribution of that wear that is depth of wear this width of wear segment uh, then width of the flank wear uh, depth at various positions all these things should have some value for particular type of cutting tool so that the user that is using that particular cutting tool will be easily identify situation where that tool has to be either regrinded or simply replaced if you are using inserts and all then regrinding will not be a choice you need to simply discard the cutting tool or replace the cutting tool so such a criteria has to be specified and that criteria is nothing but the tool life criteria now <clears throat> in this sketch you will find uh, various parameters of that criteria what are parameters are there this one is crater wear and this is a flank wear so in case of crater wear there are three parameters this km is the midpoint of that crater kb is breadth or to what extent that crater has spread and the third one is kt that is maximum depth of the crater that has been formed on the rig face of the cutting tool so out of this kb and km these are just intro uh, uh, reference parameters but the actual parameter that would be specified with the cutting tool is this kt if that particular depth has achieved for the particular cutting tool then you should either regrind the cutting tool or replace the cutting tool now this is for crater wear and these two figures are for flank wear so this is related to flank wear on this face and the uh, actual wear distribution has been shown over here in details so if you look at this second sketch you will find three zones this is first zone denoted by zone c this is second zone denoted by zone b and third one is zone n and this spread of the or width of the uh, that flat surface or this flat surface is nothing but this flat surface now on this flank the wear depth is going to have maximum value at the beginning that is but obvious right because cutting tool uh, the first portion that comes in contact with the workpiece material is going to have maximum wear so at the beginning the depth is going to have maximum value that is zone c then for zone b it almost remains constant there are certain fluctuations but it al almost remains constant and also it is at lower end compared to this beginning section and at the end this initial portion is zone c then in between zone b and at the end again that is zone n so in zone n also the wear rate is maximum 
now the reason for having this maximum wear rate is when means this is the chip flowing direction cutting tool is going to move in this direction let me change the pen the cutting tool is going to move in this direction and when workpiece moves in this direction cutting tool moves in this direction the initial contact will be over here between the cutting tool and workpiece and then workpiece proceeds in this direction so when workpiece comes in contact over here and gradually moves in this direction because of friction and heat generation there would be strain hardening of the workpiece so its hardness keep increasing and when workpiece reaches till this position it will have a maximum harden value and because of that increased hardness in this zone again that wear rate increases okay that is for zone n now in this middle zone so this is vc that is for initial zone vn for that end zone and in between you will find two parameters for that uh, for that uh, depth or uh, you can call it width also that vb and vb max why we are taking those two parameters because in this zone b as we considered that uh, depth is almost constant constant but still some fluctuations would be there and to consider that fluctuation also there are two parameters this vb indicates average value and this vb max is for the peak wherever there is a maximum wear that also has to be considered and that is denoted by vb max so out of this vc vn vb vb max any of the parameter could be specified as a tool life criteria means in this zone if this much wear is there then replace the tool in this middle zone vb max is this much vb is this much this could be uh, variable for uh, different cutting tools okay so there would be certain fixed values for this vc vb vb vn and this kt and if those values are rich then that indicates that either replace the cutting tool or re grind the cutting tool and that condition is nothing but the tool life criteria okay any doubt any query in this one we will take two examples of the cutting tool criteria now here we are going to see two examples first one for high speed steel and second one for centered carbide tool so if you are using a high speed steel then tool life criteria would be the first thing tool life criteria means if first statement is met then regrind or replace the cutting tool if second statement is met again replace or regrind the cutting tool and same with the third one so what are the conditions uh, for the tool life criteria for high speed steel first one is catastrophic failure catastrophic failure means we saw two types of wear in the cutting tool the first one of progressive wear and uh, second one was sudden failure of the cutting tool sudden failure means if this is cutting tool that you are using and suddenly breaks into pieces in any orientation if that cutting tool breaks into pieces due to some reason that reasons also we have discussed that day only so if that cutting tool breaks into pieces that tool we cannot use further and ultimately either we need to regrind it or replace it so the first condition is catastrophic failure because this can be observed in high speed steel prominently so it has been made as a uh, tool life criteria so first one catastrophic fail failure 
replace the cutting tool or regrind the cutting tool second vb that is average value of wear in this second zone b what that value is then if that vb is 0.3 mm and if this much depth you observe in the zone b replace the cutting tool or go for regrinding and third one vb max so if there is a certain peak having maximum value this could also be there and if you observe any peak having maximum value of 0.6 mm then also you should think of replacing or regrinding the cutting tool or we can see we can say that the tool life criteria has met and now go for the uh, rearrangement then second example is for sintered carbide tools now that uh, catastrophic failure is not there why not there because sintered carbide tool are mostly provided in the forms of inserts and in case of inserts we usually don't observe this phenomena frequently catastrophic failure okay so what are the uh, additional things uh, specifying the tool life criteria for sintered carbide tools first one vb that uh, maximum we are in the zone b 0.3 mm that is same as that of high speed steel itself if that uh, wear is uh, beyond 0.3 mm replace the cutting tool vb max again same 0.6 replace the cutting tool and in case of sintered carbide tool that crater wear is now also considered because uh, this first two vb and vb max are related to flank face or flank wear and the third one is re related to wear on the rake face and that is called as crater wear so what what value is there for kt if that crater wear is 0.06 plus 0.3 f f stands for the feed that you are uh, using while uh, uh, machining or when you are cutting that work piece material what feed you have given that feed will be also part of that uh, tool life criteria so criteria is 0.06 that is in millimeters only 0.06 plus 0.3 f and if this value is met for that insert then you need to replace the insert so that is tool life criteria for the sintered carbide tools any doubt any query okay uh tool life or instead of calling it as a tool life let's call it as a tool life equation or it is also called as taylor's tool life equation because this was uh, defined by uh, the scientist or researchers named taylor so the relation is v t raised to n is equal to c this is called as taylor's tool life equation this is most important one even in uh, Uh, competitive exams and all because it has got a very small number of parameters v t n and c so there will be a small numericals where you need to calculate uh, t stands for tool life v we know that that is a cutting speed c stands for 
is going to remain constant and n is the in a index that you can derive usually that n will be given as a input in the numerical or this vt and constant either of those three will be given so that you can calculate this n also but this n is nothing but over here this graph we have discussed in case of flank wear here we saw three zones in a cutting tool first one a b then b c and then b d this is width of flank wear with respect to time so as you keep on using the cutting tool zero means you just have started the cutting and in this direction cutting time is uh, cutting time is uh, increasing so initial wear then once that initial cutting has age has gone there will be a constant wear and at certain instant when width of that flank wear has increased with that increase in flank wear width there will be increase in friction there will be increase in temperature beyond certain limit and all together will cause the wear rate increase quickly okay now in this various zone at any instant if you calculate slope of this graph that slope is nothing but that n that we are seeing in this equation here this n is nothing but slope of, slope of that graph that you can calculate <clears throat> so the relation is v2 raised to n is equal to c now how we can use this relation for using this relation over here so v2 raised to n is equal to c means if i consider v1 t1 raised to n <coughs> that is condition 1 and there is condition 2 then that v2 t2 raised to n then those two are going to be same now out of this v1 t1 or v2 t2 if i consider this v2 is a reference value or these things are known to me so i will replace v2 by vr t by 2 by tr why because i am considering that this is known to me now if i have these values with me then i will rearrange this equation like this and i can calculate either unknown to life or unknown cutting speed out of those two something has to be with me either this cutting speed should be known to me or its tool life should be known to me uh, so if i have given cutting speed and i have asked to calculate tool life i can use same equation or the question could be like i want to have certain tool life so what machining speed should i use in that case also same equation will be there so after rearranging the terms you will get equation like v by vr v is the cutting speed that i am supposed to calculate vr reference cutting speed which value is known to me tr again reference tool life which value is known to me and t is tool life of that particular cutting tool with velocity v that i am supposed to calculate so that way you can use this equation and find either cutting speed or life of that cutting tool any doubt any query this n is 0 0.25 that has been calculated from this this graph only at 100 that uh, width is 0 3 so when you calculate slope that approximate value is going to be 0 0.25 so width is 0.3 time is 100 and 
the n you will get 0.25 approximately by approximating uh, this one 